Welcome to my channel. I'm Scott and in this video I am going to walk you through the process of valuing Rio Tinto stock by analyzing their financial statements and dissecting their financial ratios so we can determine if it's a buy or a sell. Rio Tinto is the world's second largest metals and mining corporation behind BHP producing iron ore, copper, diamonds, gold, and uranium. Their headquarters are in the UK and they were founded in 1873, nearly 150 years ago. The company went public in 1988 and currently trades on the New York Stock Exchange, London Stock Exchange, Australian Stock Exchange, and the Zetra in Germany. It's primarily focused on the extraction of minerals, but it also has significant operations in refining, particularly for refining bauxite and iron ore. Let's get started with the model. This is a large cap company, 139 billion market cap. They're trading at $86 a share and they have 1.6 billion shares outstanding. Let's look at the financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. This company has a ton of free cash flow almost $10 billion a year. It did drop in 2018 at 6.4 billion. Net income is the profit and loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses. They also have a ton of net income each year, almost $10 billion in 2020. Revenue is the sales for the company, and that goes from 40 billion up to almost 45 billion. This is the company's income statement. The top line is the revenue of the sales. Below that is the cost of revenue. These are the expenses directly related to generating the revenue. And the difference between those two numbers is their gross profit. They had the highest gross profit by far in 2020 at 29 billion. Below that is operating expenses and then operating income. And their operating income grew about 50% from 2017 to 2020. They paid about 650 million of interest on their debt, which is the highest they've ever paid. Last year was 550 million. And the bottom line of the income statement is their net income. And that was nearly $10 billion in 2020. In 2018, it was $13.6 billion. But I would focus on operating income when I look at the income statement. That's a better indicator of the company's overall business, as opposed to net income. This is the company's statement of cash flows. The top line is operating cash flow. That's how much cash the company generates from its operational business. You could think of operating cash flow as net income converted to cash because net income is your accounting profit and loss. It's not actual cash. You can see they generated nearly $16 billion of cash flow in 2020. Then you have capital expenditures, which are investments in property, plant, and equipment. Operating cash flow minus CapEx gives you your free cash flow. And they have $9.7 billion of free cash flow in 2020. They pay about $9 billion of dividend payments, so most of their free cash flow goes towards dividends. They're doing a good job at paying down debt. Every year they pay down a lot more debt than they issue. And another way to reward shareholders is to buy back stock. When a company buys back stock, it decreases the shares outstanding, making your shares more valuable. They bought back $2 billion in 2017, then $5 billion, $1.5 billion, and $200 million. Let's look at the capital structure. $47 billion of equity, $14 billion of debt. Their 77% equity, 23% debt. Their net debt is $2.5 billion, and their WAC is 8.67% and that's the discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four. That's 190 billion. We discount those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $172 billion. We divide that by 1.6 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 106. They're trading at 86, so they're trading at a 19% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Simply Wall Street is at $67 a share, so they're saying the stock is overvalued. They're saying it's a sell. Four analysts priced this stock in the past three months. The average price target was 99. The low was 91. The high was 108. This is the stock price the last five years, so it looks like it's pretty much only gone up. It's trading pretty close to its all-time high. They pay a semi-annual dividend. Their dividend yield is 6.5%. They pay out 92% of their net income and 93% of their free cash flow. The top 25% of the market pays a 3.5% dividend, they're way above that. Their industry pays a 2.3% dividend, and they're also way above that. Analysts are forecasting their dividend yield to go down to 6.4% in the next three years. They're the second largest iron ore producer, the largest bauxite producer, second in alumina, second in aluminum, 
fourth in copper, seventh in gold, third in diamonds, third in uranium. So you can see they rank in the top 10 in almost all the metals. They have a pretty low beta, 0.59, so the stock moves about half the market. The stock went up 81% in the past 52 weeks, while the S&P 500 went up 46%. The 52-week low was 44, the high was 93. And the stock is trading above its 50-day and 200-day moving average. About 2.5 to 3 million shares are traded each day on this stock. Of the 1.6 billion shares outstanding, 1.4 billion are on float, 8% are held by institutions, and about one half of 1% of the shares are shorted. In the past year, three years, and five years, this stock has outperformed its industry and the market. Analysts are forecasting their earnings to decrease 11%, while its industry increases 13% and the market increases 18%. Analysts are forecasting their revenue to decrease 4%, its industry to increase 6% and the market to increase 10%. In the past five years, their earnings grew 26%, the industry 20% and the market 12%. In the past year, their earnings grew 22%, its industry 6% and the market 5%. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you would have more than doubled your money. You'd be at $20,300 today. That's a 7.4% annual return. The biggest shareholder is Aluminum Corp of China at 11.3%, then BlackRock, Capital Research, Vanguard, and Norges Bank. Let's look at their financial ratios. The average P.E. in the market is 33, the median is 22. P.E. is stock price over earnings per share. To calculate earnings per share, that's net income over shares outstanding. They're at 14.3, so investors are paying $14.30 for $1 of earnings. Price to sales is 3.1. Their price to book is 3.0. Their return on invested capital is 25%. Their interest coverage ratio is 28. ROE is 21%. And their current ratio is 1.8. Their current assets are cash of 11 billion, inventory of 4 billion, and restricted cash of 1.8 billion. The company does seem to be well capitalized. They had almost $10 billion of free cash flow, 9.2 billion of working capital, and they have a $9 billion dividend payment. So they have almost $10 billion of funding. The best way to look at ratios is to compare them to companies in the same industry. I've done videos on American Battery, BHP, MP Metals, Tech Resources, and Valet. All in the same industry as Rio Tinto. And if Rio has a number in blue, they're better than the average. If they have a number in red, they're worse than the average. So they're pretty much better in every single category. They have really solid ratios. And they pay the largest dividend of all the companies. So to summarize, I have them trading at a 19% discount. This company has been around a really long time. They're not going anywhere. So I think it's a great long-term hold in your portfolio. I rank their free cash flow 7 out of 10, their revenue 8 out of 10, and their ratios 8 out of 10. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.